Hey guys, this is going to be a quick tutorial about patterns and textures in Illustrator. I'm going to go over creating and editing vector patterns like this halftone pattern and using JPEGs or raster images to, to create textures in, in colors in your objects. So I'm going to start with a blank circle. I'm going to do a halftone pattern first. I'll just create another circle. Change the color that I want the dots to be just so I can kind of see how it's going to look. Edit the shape a little bit. Uh, what I usually do for a basic pattern like that, I'll start with this built-in library. So go to the Swatch Libraries button, Patterns, Basic Graphics, and you've got dots, lines, and textures. So for this, I'll just do dots. You can see the different densities of halftone. So I'll do this 30%. Uh, I don't want black. So you can see I added this new pattern swatch here. Double click on that, select these dots, change the pattern or change the color, and it's basically done. I mean, you can tweak it some more if you want. You can, you know, sometimes I'll select the dots and add like a rough and texture. Tweak those numbers a little bit, maybe make it a little rougher. There you go. Uh, so that kind of gives it a more hand drawn feel. Or like a kind of a you know sloppy printed maybe old school newspaper looking vibe, um, so that's that's the gist of editing and creating vector patterns. The other thing though is you may want to scale this. So if you select the object, hit S for the scale tool, and then you can scale it like a normal object, but just hold the tilde key to the left of the one key, hit tilde and shift. Hold those both down while you scale, and you see instead of showing the shape of that kind of jelly bean, it switched to this rectangle. That's the size of the pattern. It's basically the bounding box. So it kind of shows you a relative scale. Scale it down, boom, perfect. So that tilde key works with rotating. So hit R for the rotation tool, start rotating. It'll rotate your object until you hit tilde, and then it rotates your pattern. So you can kind of do some fine tuning on there. And same with if you just drag the shape and hold tilde, it'll position the pattern. That works with the arrow keys too. So hit tilde and hit arrow, left, right, up, down, whatever, and it'll move it. One thing that I'll do a lot, if I need to really dial in the position, if you hit command K, it'll pull up your preferences. You can change the keyboard increment from one point to 0.1 or five or 50 or whatever. I'll change it to like 0.1 if I really need to get it exactly where I want. And then you have this super fine tuned adjustment of the position. Um, so yeah, that's vector patterns. That's the gist. So for something like this, I just found a cool like wood burl image. Um, copied that. Open up Photoshop. So I pasted it in Photoshop. And I just added a black and white adjustment layer and levels. And you can spend a lot more time tweaking this if you, if you have something in mind and this isn't cutting it. But I just did a really quick high contrast. Hit Command Shift C after you select all and you can just copy the flattened image, paste it into Illustrator. Boom. So now you have an opacity mask or an image you can use for an opacity mask. So I'll just make a new copy of this circle. I'm gonna position it back over the circle though. Uh, drag your image in front of that circle. I usually leave a little spot peeking out so you can select it. Um, hit make mask. And then boom, anywhere that was white on the image is now visible for that shape, that light blue shape that you created. Black will be completely invisible, so just use it as an, as an alpha mask. You can invert it so that the black is visible and the white is transparent. Um, either way, depends on your image and what you're trying to accomplish. If you select the opacity mask in the transparency panel, then you can position it back over your shape. You can scale it up or down. I'm going to invert that again. So I can, you know, if I want it just this huge wood grain, just scale the opacity mask. The shape isn't affected. Um, you just select your 
your shape again in your transparency panel, but stop editing the transparency now or the uh, opacity mask. And now you can, if you you know want to move it or tweak the shape or whatever, the opacity mask just masks whatever shape you create there. So that's the basics. I don't want this to be a super long tutorial. So if you have any requests of uh, you know, anything you want me to go more in depth on in that, then just let me know in the comments.